Hello, good morning everyone. This is chapter 5 with topic design of structural timber beam and column. And today's video is about timber beam which is part 1. And in Malaysia, to design a structural timber uh, beam or column, we use Malaysian Standard 544 and in this course, we focus on MS 544 Part 2, 2001 and in this chapter, uh, we cover design of beam and design of timber column. And this is the code of practice for structural use of timber. Uh, part 2, Permissible Stress Design of Solid Timber. And this copy is first revision. This standard was developed by the Technical Committee on Structural Use of Timber, established at the Construction Industry Development Board, Malaysia, CIDB, under the authority of the Building and Civil Engineering Industry Standard Committee. And uh, CIDB uh, is the standard writing organization uh, and they appointed uh, by Sirim Berhad to develop standard for the construction industry eh? uh, that covers the timber design. And this part, the second, the part two, uh, give recommendation for the structural use of the Malaysian hardwood and softwood uh, or timber species in load-bearing members. It means it can uh, receive loads. Okay, so it includes a recommendation on quality, grade stresses, and modification factors applicable to this timber when used as simple members or as a part of build-up components or as a part of structure incorporating other materials. Okay. Timber strength. Uh, for timber, the strength is depends on the axis uh, where timber have similar strength and stiffness properties which has been grouped together in table one uh, and two table four uh, in the MS 544 and the group uh, form uh, based on the weakest pieces in the particular groups uh, so uh, I show you later so so for the timber strength it is classified into one two three four five uh, depends on the pleasure strength uh, tension parallel to green Compression parallel to grain, shear is parallel to grain, and compression is perpendicular to grain. And all these uh, parameters is tabulated in Table 1 and 4 in Malaysia Standard 544. This is Table 1 uh, that uh, shows uh, different types of timber in Malaysia and this uh, each uh, species of timber is divided based on its pa bending parallel to grain, tension parallel to grain, compression parallel to grain, compression perpendicular to grain, shear parallel to grain and also the modulus of elasticity. And each of these properties uh, is divided into a grid which is select standard and common so this is select standard and common and this table one is for timber uh, which is wet if the moisture content more than 90 percent uh, it shows that this timber is in wet condition uh, so you can find this table uh, from page 5 Malaysian standard 544 and we continue to page 6. Uh, this is uh, the continue table uh, of table 1. Okay, so this is the species of the timber uh, in Malaysia. And it continues until page 
9, 10, okay? So until 10. Uh, meanwhile, for table 2, so this table 2, uh, the function is similar with table 1, but the difference is at the moisture content. For table 2, the moisture content is less than 90%, which shows that this timber is in dry condition, okay? The dry grid stresses. So this table two can be found in page 11, page 12, until page 16. Okay, so this is table one and table two. So next is table four. Table four is based on the Great. Sorry, based on the strength groups. Okay, strength groups. So if you can see here, this is table three. Uh, shows the uh, seven groups of timbers from SG one up to SG seven. So SG one uh, is more strongest compared to SG seven. So next is uh, table four. So table four is for the wet and dry grid stresses for various strength groups of timber so it has similar information as in table one and two so the difference is this table is used based on strength groups okay strength groups so the purpose of this table for one and two is to determine all these parameters okay for particular species uh, so if you have the type of species the name of the species so you can determine the bending parallel to grain up to the modulus of elasticity uh, based on table one and table two okay and also depends on the moisture content okay so you use table one and table two However, if you only have the string group information, okay, or, or, or else you have the species, but then you group it based on this table 3, then later you proceed with table 4, okay, then you determine the bending parallel to grain until modulus of elasticity based on the wet or dry condition. Wet condition, wet stresses timber is where the moisture content more than 19%. Okay, meanwhile, dry condition, dry stress, uh, timber stress uh, is less, the moisture content is less than 19%. Okay, uh, how about if the moisture content is equal to 19%? So if equal to 19%, we take, is, we take the timber as dry uh timber okay dry timber so you use table two so next is the defect timber defect so because timber is the uh, natural material okay depends on the weather uh that is one uh, factor and does timber has uh, some defect okay defect so this is the seasoning defect so it is caused by uneven exposure to drying agents such as wind, sun, and others, eh, based on the uh, uh, environment uh, surrounding the timber. And types of defect due to this seasoning defect uh, is the twisting, cupping, bowing, and cracking, as you can see here. So this is twisting, cupping, bowing, and here is crack. So when there is defect, so it can uh, tends to reduce the strength of the timber. So next is the natural defects. Uh, most common uh, type of defect under this natural uh, defect is not. Okay, so it will decrease the physical properties of timber such as tensile and compressive strength. So during the growth. Uh, of a tree, so the branches, for example, here the branches, uh, close to the ground, all lower branches die. 
So basis on those branches remain in the tree as the tree grows. Okay, and then this basis may create imperfection known as node. Okay, so this is the node cluster and this is dead node. So cluster you can see here is like dot 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 can, so it's not combined. So compared to this one, this is dead node. And here is the bug. Okay, and there are two types as you I shown you just now. So this is the dead node, the remains of damaged branches. After drying out, they become loose and fall out. Okay, so this is the dead knot. Uh, this is the life or integral knot. Uh, they are sound and firm, uh, small and not great uh, of a defect. Okay, so this is life of uh, uh, or integral knot. It 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 uh, it grown inside the uh, timber, the branches. Okay. So life knots here are usually not a problem. Uh, as they remain firmly attached to the timber uh, but however for this dead node they are loosely attached and reduce strength so uh, that node can reduce strength and nodes decrease the strength of the woods and thus lower its value of structural users um, it can this knot can cause the serious defect uh, when the load is perpendicular to green, so in 90 degrees to the green. So the green, this is the green, okay? Green, ira, lah, ira. Okay, so and other types of natural defect is the wind defect and also the shake defect. So the shake defect can classify into three main categories. The first one is the star shakes, uh, cup or ring shakes, and also heart shakes, okay? Uh, so it is due to the um, weather around the uh, weather around the timber, okay, the tree. And uh, usually the shakes uh, are the, apparently occur around the annual ring. So uh, and. Or, go, or can growth ring, uh, or growth ring of a timber. In other words, it cracks or splits in the woods. Okay, they cracks and split. Okay, they memisahkan. Okay, uh, then this is called shake. Okay? Um, uh, it's not can it cannot. Uh, it is not a structural problem. Okay, depends on the job and the use. So the main problem due to the shake defect is the aesthetics. Okay, the. Uh, the appearance, okay? Okay, where the appearance is important, shakes are undesirable, lah. okay? So, this is shake. You can see shake here. It crack, okay? It can uh, cause crack, okay? And this is the wind. Okay, other uh, types are... So, that, uh, that is the uh, timber defect based on the natural defect and also seasonal defect. So... Basically, the timber has defect because timber is natural product, and every natural product has some imperfection. Okay, it depends on uh, how quality uh, of its environment. Okay, the weather, the the blow. Okay, the the sun, the wind. Okay, the temperature. So all these factors can influence the uh, quality of the timber. So what is the difference between timber and uh, wood? So for design purposes, for structural uh, uh, purposes, so we call the wood as timber. Okay. And next is the material properties of timber. So the first one is the density. So similar with the concrete, so uh, timber also uh, you need to consider the density of timber. So every uh, single thing uh, on earth has its own density. Okay. So it is expressed as mass per unit volume, kilogram per cubic meter, and principal properties affecting strength. Okay. This is density is the principal properties affecting strength. Wood with Thick cell walls and small cell cavity, which is uh, uh, for the heavy species like uh, uh, chengal, okay, 
Warranty have higher density and strongest species. Higher density give higher shrinkage, stiffness and hardness. So the next material properties for timber is shrinkage and it occurs during drying process as absorbed moisture begin to leave the cell walls and width and thickness change by length remains the same and depends on initial moisture content value and the value at which is stabilized in surface and the result due to this material it can uh, cause defects such as cupping uh, and bowing and the percentage of shrinkage uh, is varies from uh, one plant to uh, plant okay so one tree to tree and some give higher percentage after drying and uh, depends it is depends on the uh, density of the species so good quality timbers uh, also uh, in terms of swelling okay it uh, less well and timber have thicker wall swell more than thinner one okay so next is the hygroscopic so uh, timber can absorb moisture easily and can reach an equilibrium moisture content so this is hygroscopic so next is the anistro anisotropic so under these uh, properties it can um, so under this anisotropy so it, it shows the dimensional change in what are equal along the tree structural direction so this is the characteristic of timber due to the long fibers of cells and the common orientation so the orientation is in the longitudinal direction tangential direction and also radial so this is the uh, example mm -hmm. okay so let's say this is the timber okay so we have straight line up in y direction is the radial okay so here is the longitudinal And this direction is tangential, okay, tangential. Okay, so this is the green direction. So we have a green, okay, green, ira lah, ira. In, in Malay, we call it ira. Okay, the green direction. Okay, so this is anisotropic. Uh, next is the direction of green so the elastic modulus of a fiber in a direction along its axis is considerably greater than the cross it and the slope uh, of the green can have an important effect on the strength of the timber member so this is the green eh? uh, the, the direction of the green so we can uh, we can see the the elastic uh, modulus of fiber in the direction in the, in the de this long direction, eh, direction along it is considerably greater than across it. Okay, across right. Okay, and this is the stress and strain. The strain for a given load increase with moisture content, and the, where the strain in a beam under constant uh, will increase in damp. And why, Roman? Okay, so strain is to recon, okay? So this is strain, okay? All right? When here is P, so we, uh, it can cause strain here. So if the strain is constant, it will increase uh, the damp environment uh, inside the timber. And this stress and strain behavior uh, depends on time. And if subjected to a constant stress, uh, such as permanent load, okay, uh, it reacts as a viscoelastic material, uh, the this timber, and increase its deformation with time. So this deformation, okay, 
uh, with time is called creep. Okay, so this is called creep. Okay, so next is the creep. So creep demonstrate uh, the behavior as a high stress level. Okay, so from this uh, stress and strain, continuous stress and strain uh, uh, behavior. Okay, so it can later cause the creep. Okay, uh, which uh, this creep has a high stress level induced increasing strain with increasing time. So basically, there are three types of uh, creep, which is the primary creep, uh, where the deformation rapidly increases before reaching a more stable rate. Okay, next is the secondary creep. Uh, and the third one is the tertiary creep. And the magnitude of long-term strains increase with higher moisture content. So when we dis uh, di discuss about the structure where the deflection is important, so duration of the loading must be considered. Uh, reflects in uh, this standard by applying modification factor to admissible stresses uh, depend on type of loading. Okay, so next is the fire resistant. So generally compares favorably with other structural material and is often better than most. Okay, uh, we know that timber is a bad conductor of heat. Uh, however, a dense wood offer good resistance to the fire and requires sufficient heat to cause a flame. So the heat contributivity of wood is low. And it depends on various factors such as porosity, moisture content, uh, surrounding temperature, the bulk density, and others uh, factors. Okay. So next is the durability. So in reducing the effect of weathering, uh, chemical or fungal attack. So uh, under durability. Uh, for example, hardwood is more durable to fungal decay than the sapwood. Uh, so, where the sapwood uh, has less density compared to the hardwood, and it can cause presence of organic compound which is toxic to fungi and uh, is insect. Okay, so a good timber should be durable. Okay, for example, Chengal, okay, Moranti, and uh, very good uh, types of species, uh, timber species. So it should be capable of resisting the action of fugue insects, a chemical, physical agency, and mechanical agency. Okay, so if timber is exposed to the action of acid, for example, and alkalis for a prolonged period, uh, so it can cause serious damage. So the weak alkali and acid solution usually do not affect wood to cause durable as time. Okay, so durability is uh, one uh, most one important properties in designing a structure using timber. So we need to provide uh, timber which have uh, which is durable. Okay. So next is the moisture content and we know uh, all woods or timber are porous to some extent and uh, we also know earlier that all timber are hygroscopic in nature so it can gain moisture timber can gain moisture here uh, from the atmosphere and loss uh, lose moisture to the atmosphere depending on moisture content of their cell um, um, cell walls okay so this is if you can see here uh, this is the figure which shows the wood section the timber section and this is the cell if you can see here is the bound water and here is the free water so the bound water is inside the cell so this is the this is the cell so this is one uh, wood section so inside uh, the cell is the free water and at the wall cell is the bone water so it is like your blood uh, vessel 
Okay, so uh, the blood flows uh, through the vessel. Okay, uh, meanwhile at the wall uh, vessel is the the we bound the the blood the the bound blood. Okay, that that is the example. Okay, so here is the inside the cell is the free water, and at the wall here uh, the water which uh, bound uh, around the wall inside the wall is called bound water. So this behavior of timber significantly influenced by the existence and variation of moisture content. So this is a formula to calculate the moisture content where the M1 is the mass of the piece before drying and the M2 is the mass of the test piece after drying both unit in gram. So the value for the moisture content is in percentage. Okay, moisture content in green timber is held both within cell, uh, which is called free water, and within the cell is the bound water. Okay, then, uh, then this is the fiber saturated point. Okay, we, uh, we call it as FSP. So, why this? Uh, what is the fiber saturated point, and uh, why this is important? So this fiber saturated point uh, is where all free water has been removed, but the cell walls are still saturated. So this is the key measure of how much water can be held within the timber okay, before uh, free water forms in empty spaces within the wood structure. Okay? And it is divided into two FSP, the first one is moisture below FSP and also moisture above FSP. For moisture uh, below FSP, the properties is considerably changes. Meanwhile, for the moisture above as FSP, the properties remain constant. Okay, for example here, uh, if the wood, uh, the moisture is below the fiber saturated point for example the wood shrink okay uh, can shrink but if the moisture is added and it reach the fiber saturated point and above okay so it can um, uh, remains the properties constantly okay so this is the fiber saturated point Okay, where the there is no no water in present in the cell domain. Okay, so meaning the the cell wall okay is fully completely saturated. So this is the FSP. Okay, so next is the uh, we go to the solid timber beam design. Okay, so this part is focused uh, on the design. Okay, for the timber beam. So introduction, and if you can see here, this is the commonly used type of uh, shape of the structural element. Here is solid, composite eye beam, composite box beam, and here is the glute limited beam. Uh, so it can be used uh, for the flow joints, trimmer joints, around opening, rafter, uh, and other type of uh, structural element. Okay, so the cross section of the beam may be one of the number of frequently used section as those indicated in this figure so this is the cross section okay the, okay the area so this is the eye shape okay so this is the hollow shape so it is glued okay so size of timber may be governed by the requires uh, requirement of the section modulus okay the zag the cross section and also the second moment of area okay so elastic section modulus is to limit the bending stress and to ensure that nigel torsional buckling of the compression flash no fracture flash induce failure okay so next is the cross section to ensure the vertical and horizontal shear stress do not induce failure so the this cross section okay um, this require uh, requirements uh, is similar with the concrete cross section okay uh, to ensure uh, that the vehicle and horizontal shear stress uh, do not induce failure. So the, the third 
uh, requirements is the second moment of area to limit the deflection induced by bending or shear action to acceptable limits okay the optimal limits so this is the term of sawn timber uh, so under timber there are two uh, best, uh, term which is the first one is the rough sawn or full sawn timber and the second one is the dress on surface timber so the first one you can refer to table b3a or 3b in the ms544 and for the dress on surface timber uh, can be uh, you can find it in table b34 okay this is table b3a uh, for the uh, sawn timber type at water seeming ratio more than 19 percent so uh, when it's stated here wet condition meaning meaning the moisture content is more than 19 percent percent so next is um, table b3a also this is the next uh, page okay so if you can see here the Nominal size for the sawn timber starts from 25 uh, until uh, 200 times 200. So B, uh, B, A, uh, B, H, okay. And next is the B, 3, B. So this is the sawn timber type, sawn, okay, with the moisture content 19% uh, or less, which is the dry uh, timber. Okay, so this is uh, B3B. Okay, next is the B4. So this B4 is for the dress sawn timber. Okay, so at 19% moisture content, which is dry condition. So what is the difference between sawn timber and dress sawn timber? So sawn timber has been aged and trim but not dress okay not surface okay the surface is uh, uh, not smooth compared to the dress sawn timber okay meanwhile for the dress sawn timber uh, has been machine finishes and it is smooth meaning the dress sawn timber is more uh, cost uh, costly compared to sawn timber okay and if you can see here both in table b4 and b3 okay either b3a or b3b it has nominal size minimum size area second moment of area section modulus and radius radius of duration okay so this is table uh, similar with table uh, b4 so for timber design we select the nominal size and later we continue the design using the minimum size okay so this is very important information for the design uh, procedure so for the timber design using the malaysian standard 544 so if you uh, determine the nominal size okay first you determine the nominal size and uh, later you use the minimum size to proceed with the design process okay to check the federal capacity the shear capacity uh, the deflection and, and, and other other capacity using the minimum size so this is very important information all timber design use minimum size okay so let's say uh, if uh, the minimum size is not stated in table b4 or b3b or b3a you can refer to this table also okay this is table b2 okay um uh, permissible deviation of surface timber size uh, for the dry uh, timber so for the nominal dimension so this is the nominal dimension we, we, we take table b3a as the example so this is the nominal size or nominal dimension so we need to reduce this nominal size as 
minimum size. Okay, we need to select the minimum size uh, in the design process. Okay, if uh, there is no minimum size given uh, for the certain nominal size, so we refer to this table. So based on this table for the dry timber, for the nominal dimension size which is less than 100, so we reduce 3 millimeter. Okay, uh, for this range between 100 to 150, we reduce 5 and the X more than 150, we reduce is uh, a 6 millimeter. So for example, for example here, here is 25. Okay, uh, B and also the overall drop is 25. B, H. Okay, here is B, here is H. Okay, uh, H. Okay, so uh, then we refer to this table B2. Less than 100, we need to reduce the surface with 3 millimeters. So 25 minus 25, 25 minus 25. Thus, our minimum size is 22 and 22. Okay. 22 in width and overall depth is 22 millimeter. So this is how we read the minimum size. Okay, next is the uh, notation used in timber design. Okay, so you need to understand how to read the notation in timber design. So this is one example. Okay, for the applied bending stress perpendicular to grain. Okay, so how to read this one? The first one we read this M. So M, the first the first uh, letter, okay, is the type force. Okay, so either it is compression, bending, or tension. Okay, if the symbol the notation is M, so it means this is the bending stress. Okay, bending stress. Okay, so next letter. Uh, the notation is the second one is A, which is represent the significance. So the under the significance there are great, applied, permissible, effective, then and also mean arithmetic. Okay, mean arithmetic. And in this example, the notation is A, which is applied. So meaning this is the applied bending stress. Okay. Applied, this is applied bending stress. Okay, again. Okay, applied bending stress. Okay, so next notation is this symbol. Okay, this symbol. Okay. Alright, so this symbol is the geometry. So there are two types of geometry the first one is the parallel the second one is perpendicular to grain thus we read this uh, example as applied bending stress perpendicular to grain so this is how to read the notation in timber design so the grid stress Okay, defined as the stress which can safely be permanently sustained by material of the specific section, size of a particle, strength, class, or species. So this grid stress can be determined from table 1 and table 2, okay, or table 4. So you have seen this table 1, 2, and 4, okay. So table 1 is for the species. Uh, for the great stresses with species uh, having moisture content more than 19%. Meanwhile, for table 2, for the great stresses with species uh, having moisture content less than 19%. Meanwhile, for table 4, okay, the great stress uh, is determined based on the strength group. Okay? So you can use either table 1. 2 or 4, okay, we use only one table, okay, to determine the grid stress, okay, and there are four grid uh, listed in this table, okay, which is the basic, select, standard, and common, okay, okay, this is table 1, okay,
Okay, based on the, depends on the select, standard and common. So here is the stresses, okay. Uh, and it's divided into the select, standard and common type, the grid. This, this is table 2, okay. And this is table 4. And the strength uh, graded by taking into account of defect by the process of reduction strength ratio after grading. So there are several, uh, this is one uh, design consideration. The first one is the permissible stress design. So introducing the safety margin by considering structural behavior under working or service load condition and comparing the stresses thereby induced with permissible value. So the stress induced by working load is the failure stress divided by factor of safety. So it is determined using elastic analysis, the applied stresses. Okay, so by assuming the structure is in elastic behavior and refer to the elastic theory. So the material is homogeneous. Okay, for the one span, for example, for one span uh, L beam, we assume that this material is, this timber is homogeneous, which it has uh, same physical properties. Uh, the material is isotropic, uh, meaning the elastic properties is same in all direction, and the materials obey Hooke's law. And in designing the agile bending or shear strength, it must satisfy below the applied stress, must less or equal permissible stress. Okay, so applied stress is due to the actual loading, okay, actual loading acting on the beam. Meanwhile, the permissible stress is calculated based on the factor okay, uh, listed in Malaysia Standard 544, where the applied stress is determined using elastic theory, and this permissible stress is determined by uh, the grade stress multiplied with the modification factor. This grade stress is determined from Table 1, Table 2, or Table 4. Okay, so... Again, grid stresses is determined from table 1, table 2, or table 4. Depends on the moisture content, uh, uh, type of species, and the strength group. Meanwhile, for the modification factor, it depends on the K1, K2, and other, other several uh, modification factors. Later, you, you, uh, you can see this modification factor. And this modification factor is based on Relation standard 544. Uh, this is the tensile strength. So the greater than that of the compression strength. So both compression and tension have linear behavior. So designed to resist combined, the design, this is under design consideration, okay? To resist combined bending and agile stresses. So compression ductility is present before failure occurs, whilst in tension brittle, sudden failure occurs. So this is for basically commonly for the timber design. Okay, so under timber design, uh, we consider the combination of bending and agile stresses. With the assumption the material elastic, okay, so the modulus of elasticity is the same in tension and compression, and the plane section remain plane during the deformation. Okay, so this, uh, the second design consideration is the moisture content. Okay, where well, there are two categories of moisture content. The first one is in the wet stress, where the MC is more than 19%. Uh, next is the second one, is the dry stress, where the moisture content is less or equal. Okay, or equal to 19%. And for the beam design, the modification, modification factor okay, for stress grain uh, grid is K1, K2, K3, K4, and K5 and 6. Where K1 is due to the duration of loading. K2 is the load sharing system. Uh, K3 is the bearing stress. Uh, K4 is the shear at notch end. K5 is the form factor. And the K6 is the depth factor so for the beam design you need to determine this modification factor okay uh, 
based on the checking, okay, flow flexural checking, shear checking, okay. So the first one is the duration of loading. So this K1 can be determined from table 5, Malaysian Standard 544 Part 2. So you can find this table in page 20, okay, version 1, eh? Uh, page 20, Malaysian Standard 544. So its use depends on the duration of loading being considered. Okay, so the value of K for the long term duration of loading, which is the example, the date load, the GK plus the QK for the long term. So we take the K1 as 1, okay, where there is no increase in stress. Okay, the next one is the medium term, okay. Uh, for the GK plus the temporary impose, okay, the temporary QK, uh, the value of K1 is 1.25, where the stress increase up to 25%. So increase, eh? this is 0, 25, 50, and 75% increment. So the third uh, duration of loading is the short term, where it is combination of the GK, uh, QK, and also the wind load. So, under this short term, we take the value of K is 1.50, where the stress increase up to 50%. So, the next uh, duration of loading is the very short term, where the value of K1 is 1.75, uh, which means the stress increase up to 75%. So, this is K1 okay, uh, in page 20, Malaysian Standard. 544. So next is the load sharing system which is K2. K2 uh, in Malaysian standard is stated in clause 10 okay uh, where in the load sharing system which consists of four or more members okay and the distance between elements spacing in less than 110 millimeter and which has adequate provision for the lateral distribution, thus we take K2 equal to 1. So for example, okay, so this is the beam, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. For this system, there are 5 beam, so number of element is 4 or more, okay, 4 or more. Okay, for in this example, there are five beams here. Yeah? And the distance between one beam to another beam is less than 610. So from one beam to this beam, so the distance is less than 610 millimeter. So if these two requirements um, is fulfilled, thus we take K2 equal to 1.1. It must fulfill these two requirements. Okay, if the beam is less than four, okay, but the spacing uh, meets 610 millimeter and less, okay, you need to use the K1 as 1.0, meaning there is no load sharing. Okay, if you use K2 equal to 1.1 by uh, and uh, by consider that the number of beam is four and more, and the distance from one beam to another beam is six hundred ten and less. So we take the E, the Young modulus, uh, as a E mean. Okay, use the E mean. But if there is no load sharing, where the K two is equal one point zero, then we use E minimum in our checking. Okay, so under the uh, beam design. So where you can find the E minimum and E min. So E min and E minimum can be found in table 1, table 2 and table 4. Okay, the stress grid uh, table. Okay, so next is the bearing stress which is K3. So K3 is from table 6 in page 
21 and 22 Malaysian standard 544 so this K3 um, consider the bearing stress okay so for the flagellar members you need to uh, consider the K3 flagellar members for the beam okay flagellar members meaning beam okay beam design so under the beam design you need to consider the bearing stress okay which is K3 so at any bearing on the side of timber so there are two condition okay this is the first condition the permissible stress in compression perpendicular to the grain is dependent on the length and position of the bearing so for the for, for the bearing for the length bearing less than 150 so this is the bearing length okay this is the bearing length if this bearing length is 150 or less okay and it is located 75 millimeter or more from end of the member so this is the bearing and this is the end of the member the k3 okay should be determined from table six okay determine k3 from table six meanwhile if the bearing stress is more than 150 we take k3 equal to 1.0 okay so this is the first condition the first condition where the bearing length here the bearing length is 150 mm or less and or the the bearing is located 75 millimeter and more so if it fulfill these two requirement thus we determine k3 from table 6 meanwhile if the bearing length is more than 150 millimeter and it is located at any place and have length more Oh, sorry uh, length less than 75 okay or zero so we take k3 equal to 1.0 okay so this is a and this is selection b depends on the bearing length and also the location of the bearing so next is the table let's see table six so table six This is table 6, modification factor for K3. Okay, this is K3. So, this is the bearing of length. Okay, so the bearing of length uh, in millimeter, so 10, 15, 25, 40, 50, 75% uh, millimeter, sorry, uh, 100 millimeter and 150 or more. Okay, this is table 6. Okay, modification, modification factor K3 for bearing stress. Okay, so if the bearing stress is 150 and more, so we take the K3 equal to 1. Okay, K3 equal to 1. So meanwhile, if the length of bearing is 150 and less, so we take the K3, okay, as stated here. Okay, depends on the length of bearing if the length of bearing is 100 thus you take k3 as 1.10 so this is k3 so next is the shear at notch which is k4 so shear at notch uh, can be found at page 22 uh, and also clause 11.4 in malaysian standard 544 so the square con, uh, con notch at the ends of the flagellar member cause a stress. So flagellar member means beam of a stress concentration which should be allowed as follows. So there are two notch consider, uh, uh, need to be considered. The first one is the bottom notch. The second one is the top notch. Okay. So what is the bottom notch? Okay. 
So if the arrangement of the flexural member uh, using the bottom notch, so this is the notch, okay, the notch, okay, yeah, this, this is the notch, yeah? and on, at this end, uh, ends of the flexural member, ends of the beam, so this is the notch, okay. So we consider here, yeah, so let's say, not let's say, so under the bottom notch, where the HE here is more or equal to 0 0.6 H, okay. This is the H, okay, and here is the HE, then you check the the value of the HE should be more or equal to 0 0.6 H, okay, if this requirement uh, fulfill, okay, thus we use K4, HE divided by H, okay, so this is the K4 for the bottom notch. The second uh, type of notch is the top notch. Okay, so this is the uh, so end of the beam here. So uh, this is the notch. Okay, this is the top notch. Okay, compared to this one, uh, this is at the bottom and this here is at the top. So we have uh, from this uh, end of the bearing to the end of the notch here. Okay, this uh, dimension is A. Okay, A, so here is H, and the depth of the, uh, and here is HE. Okay, first you check the HE. HE, if more or equal to 0 0.6H, okay, and this A is less or equal to HE, Thus, the K4 is calculated using this formula. Meanwhile, if the HE is more or equal to 0 0.6H and A is larger than HE, the value of K4 is equal to 1. Okay, so this is K4. So next is the form factor. So this form factor can be referred in clause 11.4, Malaysian Standard 544, page 23. Okay, so if the flagellar members, the beam, okay, is solid timber of rectangular cross section, the K5 is equal to 1.0. So if the timber is solid and circular section, so the K5 is equal to 1.18. 1.18. Okay. And meanwhile, for if the timber, the beam is solid and the square section loaded on a diagonal. So this is the shape. So it it uh, loaded on the diagonal. Okay. So this is the the surface. Okay, the the support. So the uh, when uh, the the beam is arranged at this uh, shape. Okay, using this shape. So the K5 is equal to 1.4. 4, 1. However, commonly uh, in the beam design, we use solid timber of rectangular cross section. Okay, next is the depth factor, which is K6. So K6 uh, is in page 23, uh, Malaysia Standard 544. So for the great bending stress applied to timber member having H, if H, okay. Okay, so the depth of the overall depth of the beam, okay, uh, is more than three hundred millimeter. Okay, so we need to calculate the K six using this equation. Okay, 
So this equation applies when the depth of the beam is more than 300 millimeter. So this is the lateral stability for solid and laminate. Okay. So, uh, it is uh, stated in table 7, page 24, Malaysian Standard 544. Uh, this is the, there are two columns here. The first column is the degree of lateral support. Uh, and here is the maximum depth to burrit ratio H over B. So here under the degree lateral support, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 uh, lateral support. Okay, degree of lateral support. So if, if the lateral stability for solid and laminated beams okay listed in table one two or four uh, and the degree of, uh, of the lateral support uh, there is no lateral support then we take the maximum VAP to break ratio is h over b for example this is the cross section and this cross section the minimum size uh, based uh, determined from table one or table two or table four Okay, so here is B and H. Okay, then we calculate H over B. This is the actual minimum size. This ratio needs to be compared with the value from table 7 based on the degree of lateral support. If, for example, there is no lateral support, then we take the maximum depth to break ratio uh, is 2, meaning the H over B from the dimension, the minimum dimension in table 1, 2, uh, sorry, not table 1, 2 uh, From table B3A, B3B and also B4 Okay, so uh, you need to make sure that it is less than 2 So this is the example Okay, so this is table 2 to check the lateral Table 7 to check the lateral stability for solid and laminated beams hmm. So under the design process Okay, there are five uh, principal consideration. So, in the beam design, timber beam design, you, ne you need to check the flagellar capacity, the shear capacity, bearing capacity, lateral stability, and deflection. So, let's see the first checking. So, this is the bending of flagellar checking. Okay, the bending uh, capacity of flagellar capacity. So, we need uh, this checking must satisfy. Okay, the actual bending stress must be less or equal to permissible bending stress. Okay, so meaning this is the optimal value. Okay, and this value from the actual loading. Okay, so this bending stress, applied bending stress, so how you read, so here is applied bending stress this is uh, parallel to grain okay so this symbol is parallel to grain applied this is bending so we call it as applied uh, bending stress parallel to grain so this equation is determined using this formula where the ma divided by z okay ma is the form from the moment from the analysis so if you have beam Let's say this is the beam, okay, loaded with the GK and QK. So you analyze the shear and also the moment maximum, okay, using the uh, WL power of 2 divided by 8, okay, for the moment maximum. So this is the MA, meanwhile for Z is BH divided by 6. BH power of 2. Okay, BH power of 2 divided by 6. Or uh, also can be calculated by moment of inertia divided by Y. Okay, so this is Z. But uh, commonly we use this equation. BH power of 2 divided by 6. Meanwhile, this uh, permissible, this is ADM. The ADM meaning permissible, permissible bedding stress parallel to grain is determined using this equation where this equation is equal to uh, 
<coughs> bending parallel to green so this is bending parallel to green this g, uh, g so this value is determined from table one or table two or table four depends on the uh, species the strength group and also the moisture content multiply with the k1 k2 k5 and k6 okay k1 is the duration of loading uh, k2 is the load sharing system k5 is the form factor and the k6 is the depth factor so the next checking is the shear okay shear capacity so this is the shear capacity so under this shear capacity we need to make sure uh, it satisfy the applied shear parallel to green must last or equal to the permissible shear stress parallel to green so this is parallel symbol this is applied this is permissible okay so the actual shear stress must be less than permissible shear stress and this applied shear stress is from this equation okay so for the rectangular cross section the maximum horizontal shear stress occurs at the level of the natural axis okay so for this is the rectangular so we know the natural axis is h divided by 2 and here is the point where the maximum horizontal shear stress occurs okay so then we can determine the actual or applied uh, shear stress per, uh, parallel to grain by uh, calculate 1.5 v divided by a where this v is from the uh, beam analysis and we take is this v from the maximum shear value okay uh, for example here is the beam okay this beam is um, subjected to the gk and qk and then you calculate the uh, shear force and this is the v okay the maximum value the v okay and this is the cross section that's this is the cross section b multiply with h okay <clears throat> so this is for the rectangular cross section section okay uh, meanwhile for the other type of section other type of section this applied shear stress is determined using this equation okay f v much, uh, multiply with a u multiply with uh, y prime divided by b multiply with the moment of inertia in x axis okay and this permissible shear stress parallel to green is calculated using this equation so here this is the shear parallel to grid so this shear parallel to green is determined from table one or table two or table four depends on the species of the timber or strength group and also depends on the moisture content and this shear parallel to green is multiplied with k1 k2 and also k4 where this k4 is the shear at notch okay so then you compare this value with the actual shear stress and the actual shear stress should be less or equal to permissible shear stress parallel to grain. Okay, next design process is to check the bearing capacity. So this is the bearing area. So provided at the ends of the beam is much larger than is necessary to satisfy the permissible bearing stress requirement. So the behavior of timber under the action of concentrate loads, for example, at position of support, is complex and influenced by both the length and location of the bearing as shown in this figure A and figure B. 
the grid stress for compression perpendicular to the grid is used to determine the permissible stress. So this is the permissible stress equation. Okay, under this checking, uh, it needs to satisfy the bearing stress, the applied bending stress perpendicular to, be, uh, to grain must be less or equal to permissible bearing stress, okay? So AGM it stands for permissible and here is the perpendicular to grain. Okay, so perpendicular to grain. So under this checking, the capacity of the bearing area, so it must satisfy this condition. Okay, so the actual, the applied or actual bending stress perpendicular to grain must less or equal to permissible bearing stress perpendicular to grain so this value okay is calculated using p divided by area of bearing okay area of bearing not area of beam this is area of bearing okay so this here is the area of bearing okay area of bearing here okay area of bearing so we have that side bearing so this is area of bearing Okay, and this permissible bearing stress perpendicular to grain is referred to this equation. Okay, so depends on the position or location of the bearing length. Okay, the permissible bearing stress is taken into account. Uh, the value of the Compression perpendicular to grain. Okay, this compression perpendicular to grain is determined from table 1, table 2, or table 4. Depends on the type of species or strength group and also depends on the moisture content. And multiply with the K1, K2, and K3, where this K3 it depends on the length of this bearing okay and also the location of the bearing if k3 okay the if the location of the bearing is 75 millimeter and more and also the length of this bearing is 150 and below so we need to determine k3 from table 6 Okay, if this requirement if this requirement is not fulfilled, okay, so we take K3 as one. Okay, so this equation and this equation is same. Okay, the difference is the, the K3, eh? either is from table six or equal to one. Okay, depends on the length of the bearing and also the location of the bearing. So next we check the lateral stability. Okay, this is the st uh, lateral stability. So uh, this uh, checking uh, is referred to table seven. Okay, Malaysia Standard five four four part two, and this uh, checking should be done uh, frequently provided to the compression flash of the beam by nailing of floor boards. Uh, rock decking and others uh, a beam with which the depth and length are large in compression to the width uh, so the maximum depth to maximum breadth b over h are given relating to the furring restraint condition uh, as shown in table 7 eh? uh, in Malaysia standard 544 so I have shown you example uh, how to use uh, to check this lateral stability let's say okay let's say this is the cross section of your rectangular beam okay this is the minimum size bh so then you calculate the actual uh, ratio okay the actual ratio is h divided by b okay 
Okay, this is the actual ratio and it should be less or equal to the limiting limiting ratio stated in table 7. Okay, table 7. Next checking is the deflection. Okay, deflection. So under the def def uh, timber deflection checking, you need to satisfy this condition. Actual loading, uh, sorry, actual deflection must last or equal to 0 0.03 multiplied with the length of the beam span or less than 14 millimeter, whichever is the lesser. So this is the actual deflection. This is the control deflection. So under the control deflection, the optimum deflection, there are two values. The first one is uh, zero. Here is zero point zero zero three L or fourteen mm. So whichever is the lesser, okay. Then we compare with this actual deflection where this deflection m okay is due to bending okay due to bending so this is calculated based on the type of loading okay type of loading so this is the type of loading okay for example this is simply supported beam Okay, simply supported beam where the maximum deflection is equal to this equation. So this is the M for this type of loading. Okay, and for the second type of loading, the maximum deflection equal to PL power of T divided by 48 multiplied with the L modulus and also moment of inertia. So this is the Delta M for this type of loading. Let's say if you have this type of loading, okay, combination of one and two, okay, if you have this combination, so Delta M is equal to five W L power of four divided by three eight four E I plus, okay, P L power of 3 divided by 48 EI. So this is uh, this the, the timber beam uh, receive UGL and also the point load at mid span. Okay, so same uh, with other types of uh, loading. Okay, so if there is combination, so you need to add uh, total the total up the combination value. So this is the third type of the loading, okay? So you can, uh, if you remember in your mechanics of material, okay? Under the deflection, uh, uh, for example, Macaulay method. So you have proved the equation using Macaulay method, okay? That is, uh, uh, you have learned the fundamental uh, deflection, okay? from mechanics of material and this is other type of load arrangement okay but however basically our normal uh, common types of loading is uh, one two and three okay so this is common type so next uh, this uh, actual deflection uh, must uh, be total up with this deflection due to shear here. Okay, the calculation uh, deflection due to shear as shown in this slide where the deflection due to shear is equal to 19.2 multiplied with the maximum moment divided by cross-sectional area of the beam multiplied with the um, elastic modulus. Okay, then later after you calculate, after you get this value, okay, the deflection due to shear, deflection due and deflection due to moment. Okay, so finally you total all 
those two value as a total deflection and it's compare with 0.03L or 40 mm, whichever is the lesser. So this is the deflection checking. Okay, example 5.1. A main beam of 3 meter length of span over an opening 2.8 meter wide and supports a flooring system which exert a long duration lodging of 3.9 kN per meter including its own self-weight over its span. The beam is supported by 50 mm white walls on either side. So this is the white walls. Carrying out, um, carry out design check to show that 70, this uh, area, this uh, size, the timber size, uh, using the deep sawn section of strength group 4 of timber at 90 degrees of moisture content with standard grid. So, uh, under this example, we need to check the uh, carry out the design checking, meaning uh, to need to check the flexure capacity, shear capacity, the bearing capacity, uh, the deflection, and also the lateral stability. So this is a very important information. A long duration loading. Okay, so this is K one. Okay, equal to one point zero. Okay, uh, refer to table five. Okay. Uh, next is the, this is the GK, 3.9 3, uh, kN per meter and this 3.9 is including the beam self weight and this beam is placed on the wall, okay, the 50 mm side wall. So this side wall, this wall, okay, have the size uh, 50 mm, okay, so this is the bearing okay and this is the size of bearing let's say this is the beam can okay so this is uh, this is 70 mm here is 50 mm for the beam for the bearing size okay uh, and the timber type is the sawn section okay with the strength group 4 so see here you do not have information on the timber species, thus you cannot use table 1 and table 2. Okay, when the information refers to the strength group 4, we directly use table 4 to determine the uh, stresses. Yeah? And at 19% of moisture, meaning the timber is dry and with standard grade STD. So this standard grade, ninety percent moisture and group four, refer uh, later we refer to table four. Okay, so so this is the clear span for the beam, and this is the effective span. And the distance, uh, the bearing distance from the beam end is fifty mm. Okay, so this is the information. So first, uh, we check the geo geometrical properties. The clear distance is 2.8 meter. The bearing width or length is 50 millimeter. The effective length is 2.85 meter. And the beam dimension is 70 uh, in a breadth, the width, and also the depth of the section is 990. So this is 75 and 200. So here, this uh, size is the nominal size, and later, when proceed with the design checking, we we use the minimum size. So, from the nominal size, we reduce the size uh, to the minimum size. So we the minimum size for the breadth of the section is seventy mm, and the depth of the section is uh, one hundred ninety mm. If you refer to this information, uh, it is sawn section, the deep sawn section. So deep sawn section here meaning it is dress sawn section. So dress sawn section uh, refer to table before and uh, look at nominal size uh, 75 uh, to 200. So 75 to 200. 
Thus, the minimum size for the design checking is 70. The breadth of the timber and also the, or the depth of the timber is 190. So, we use this minimum size. Next, how we do this selection table before, first is uh, the deep sawn timber, Be deep meaning it is dressed, uh, it is uh, uh, have a smooth surface and the moisture content is dry, okay, 90% uh, moisture content which is it in dry condition, okay, so here at 90%, 99% of moisture, so and the cross section is calculated uh, as uh, 13.3 meter square. Okay, uh, you, ca uh, you can calculate this, be multiplied with H. And the second moment of area, uh, area is uh, BH power of 3 divided by 12. Okay, this is BH power of 3 divided by 12. In X direction. So next is the loading. We know that the uniform distributed loading is 3.9 kN per meter, including the self-weight of the beam. And the third stage is to determine the key factor. From the information, we know that the, uh, it is the long-term. It received the long-term loading. Thus, the K1 is equal to 1. There is no load sharing. Uh, the K2 is equal to 1. The bearing... Uh, the bearing width is less than 150, but it is located less than 75%. Thus, it doesn't meet uh, table 6. Uh, we proceed with the K3 uh, equal to 1.0. And K4, there is no notch uh, at beam end. K4 is equal to 1. Uh, then the, ta the, the section of the beam is the rectangular cross section. K5 equal to 1. And the beam depth is less than 30, 100 meter, 300 meter, where the beam depth is 190, thus our K6 is equal to 1. Okay, next we proceed with the flagella checking. Okay, or before we go to the flagella checking, we, we refer to the uh, strength group 4, okay, the dry condition. Uh, based on this information, okay, we refer to table 4 in the Malaysia Standard. 544. Okay, this is table 4. Okay, uh, based on the strength group, in the example 5.1, we refer to SG4 and the modulus of, uh, sorry, the moisture content is uh, 90%, which is dry. And the grade of the beam, the timber is And this is the standard grid. Yeah? So in the question, uh, refer to the standard grid. Okay, for the strength group 4, condition dry, uh, where the moisture content is equal to 90%. And this value, 13.2, is the bending parallel to grain. is used for the flagellal checking or bending checking. Uh, next is the compression perpendicular to grain. So this value is used to check the bearing capacity uh, this value is to check the shear capacity and due to the no load sharing uh, where the k2 is equal to one we select the modulus of elasticity as e minimum okay so please take note here if k2 uh, equal to 1.1 we use e mean but if the K2 is equal to 1, we select E minimum. And this is all the value uh, based on table 4. So first we check the bending stress. So under this bending checking, we need to ensure that it fulfill this requirement. Okay, the applied bending stress perpendicular to grain must be less or equal to permissible bending stress perpendicular to grain. Okay, so this applied uh, bending stress is calculated 
using equation m divided by z okay so where this m is the maximum moment from the beam analysis or you can calculate using this equation wl power of 2 divided by h l is uh, refers to l effective which is 2.8 5 if I'm, if I'm not mistaken yes 2.85 meter okay uh, so thus you get the this value is equal to 3.96 divided by z dz is uh, bh power of 2 divided by 6 unit in millimeter power of 3 so meanwhile for this value okay the permissible uh, bending stress is the Stress bending parallel to grain, okay, which is this value, multiply with the K1, multiply with K2, multiply with K5, and multiply with K6. So this is permissible bearing stress. And you need to ensure that this value is less or equal to this uh, permissible stress and we found that the permissible stress is equal to 13.2 and the actual stress is equal to 9.4 which, mean, which means this value is less than this value hence the band stress satisfied is satisfied okay the checking for the bending stress is okay so next checking is the shear stress. So for the shear stress, you need to ensure that it meets this requirement. Where the applied shear stress parallel to grain must be less or equal to permissible shear stress parallel to grain. So this is from the actual uh, loading yeah, where you analyze the beam. Okay, and you get the maximum shear where this value okay for the rectangular beam is equal to 1.5 fv divided by a and this v is calculated using wl divided by 2 this fv wl divided by 2 and this a is b multiplied with h thus we get the uh, uh, applied uh, shear stress parallel to grain equal to 0 0.627 and the permissible shear stress here is calculated using this equation where this uh, shear parallel to grain is equal to 1.23 multiplied with the K1, K2 and K4 and we get this value equal to one point two three which is more than applied shear stress thus the shear stress checking is okay okay next is the bearing stress so for the bearing stress we need to make sure it meets this requirement where the applied bending stress perpendicular to grain is less or equal to permissible bending stress perpendicular to grain where this value the applied bending stress is equal to p over area of bearing less than must be less than compression perpendicular to grain which is from table 4 multiply with k1 multiply with k2 and k4 so this p okay refer to uh, the shear value okay the shear fv eh? 5.56 the maximum shear value And meanwhile, the area of bearing, okay, area of bearing uh, is referred to the uh, 
this uh, situation. Okay, uh, we go back to the information here. Okay, this is the length of bearing. Uh, the beam is supported by 50 mm wide walls, meaning here is 50 mm both sides. Okay, so this uh, bearing okay, has its own thickness. Okay, kita balang situ ya. So here, this thickness, okay, uh, this is the beam, this beam, okay, this is the beam. And this is the bearing. So this is the bearing. So and here is the area of bearing. Okay. And this dimension is 50. And meanwhile this dimension is referred to the breadth of the beam, 70. Because the beam here is uh, 70 and the overall depth is 190 and it is uh, uh, stand on the uh, bearing here and the width of the bearing, the width of the bearing is 50 and the, the depth of the bearing is 70. Thus, the A bearing is equal to 50 multiplied with 70 mm. Okay, so this is our bearing, 50 multiplied with 70. Thus, we get this value P divided by area of bearing is equal to 1.59. Okay, meanwhile, for this equation, uh, stress CG for particular, the uh, compression for particular to grain, uh, which is 1.65, multiply with the K1, K3, and K4, and we get 1.65, which is more than the applied bending stress perpendicular to grain thus the bearing stress checking is satisfied next is the lateral stability so the minimum depth to breadth ratio h over b okay h over b okay from the minimum size we get around 2.73 okay 190 divided by 70 and from table 7 the maximum depth to breadth ratio where the end should be held in position. Okay, so this is our beam. Okay, and this beam uh, uh, is, uh, the position of the beam is on these two bearing. Okay, and, and this end should held in position. Thus, based on this table 7, the, the maximum depth to bore ratio is equal to 3. And finally, we check that this 2.71 is uh, less than 3, meaning the, the stability, the lateral stability for this beam is okay. Next is the deflection. So for the deflection, we need to ensure the actual, the actual deflection where it is the total of the deflection due to the moment. Okay, plus deflection due to shear must be less or equal to 0.003L or 14mm, whichever is less. So this deflection due to the moment, so our beam is subjected to the UDL, thus this deflection due to the moment is calculated using this formula. And finally, we get the value is 11.02 plus. Okay, our deflection due to shear is using this formula. And finally, we get the value is 0 0.75. And the total for this uh, deflection due to bending plus deflection due to shear is 11.77 mm. And we check, uh, it must last, uh, we check this one. This is 0 0.003 multiply with 2.85. Okay, then we get this value is equal to 
8.55 so between 8.55 and 40 meters so this is the, the lesser value thus we compare it with 8.55 where this permissible uh, deflection is less than the actual deflection meaning in example 5.1 the deflection checking is fail okay so not okay for the deflection okay thus has the deflection of the beam is unsatisfied need to redesign by increase the size of beam okay so this is example 5.1